Welcome to another season of Arkansas Wildlife TV. It's just about turkey season here in the natural state. In fact, it is turkey season for youth hunters this weekend. Opens up Monday for everybody else. So this week, we're gonna take a look at some behind the scenes work the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission is doing in cooperation with some Arkansas universities to better understand Arkansas's wild turkey population. We're trying to identify the survival and harvest rate of turkeys in the Ozarks and the Wachita's, um, primarily on public property so that we can set hunting regulations more accurately. And a little later in the show, we're gonna be talking all about American eels. They make an incredible journey from their birthplace in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and spend part of their lives here in the natural state. We believe that American eels are spawned out in the Sargasso Sea, uh, out in the ocean, uh, kind of near the Bermuda area of the ocean. After they reach Arkansas, they might stay here. We think it might take them three to four years to get here, and they might actually stay here from four to eight years, and maybe even longer in some instances. Usually maybe leaving sometime around when they're about 10 to 12 years old. We'll tell you all about that, as well as a current research program the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission is conducting to understand if man-made manipulations to our waterways could be affecting the migration of those American eels. All that in this week's winner of a free hunting and fishing license right after this break. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all, for less. Deep in the natural state's Ozark and Washita Highlands, wildlife researchers are using science to help the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission gain a better understanding of the state's wild turkeys. We're trying to identify the survival and harvest rate of turkeys in the Ozarks and the Wachita's, um, primarily on public property so that we can set hunting regulations more accurately. Since achieving a high water mark of about 20,000 turkeys in the late 1990s and early 2000s, Arkansas turkey hunters have been taking fewer and fewer birds, with the harvest bottoming out at less than 7,000 in 2011. The Arkansas Game and Fish Commission adopted a more conservative season structure in recent years and also implemented a regulation that prevented adult hunters from taking juvenile male turkeys known as jakes. What we're looking at is the effects of the no jake regulation to see how many jakes are actually carried over from year to year. With the new jake harvest policy, they said we want to track survival, make sure that survival rates and recruitment rates of the jakes into the two-year-old population are at levels that they expect them to be. Are we increasing the two-year-old age class of, of male turkeys? That's what we want. We want more male turkeys in the two-year-old age class. You hear more gobbling that way. Hunters are more satisfied because they're hearing more gobbling. They got a better opportunity to harvest a bird. In addition to leg bands, 60 turkeys each year are outfitted with a transmitter that allows researchers to track the bird's movements. Future research projects will use that information to determine which habitat types best support the birds. These radio transmitters provide an enormous amount of data. We're getting five GPS location points for each bird per day. We're getting all this huge amount of movement data so we can learn about the ecology of the animal, how they're moving, what sort of things on the landscape is influencing them and their movement patterns. And those sort of things that are influencing their movement patterns, does that impact their survival rates? Uh, do they have lower survival because of uh, certain management or higher survival because of certain management activities? Prescribed fire, things like that, we're going to be able to look at, you know, where these turkeys go if they come back and use that area pretty, pretty quickly after it's been burned. 
It's all valuable information for wildlife managers, but collecting it isn't easy. There's hundreds of man hours from game and fish staff uh, in, all across the state, a U.S. Forest Service staff, and then our staff with the Division of Ag. Tracking, uh, you know, monitoring trail cameras, tracking these turkeys, trying to figure out their movements, trying to get them on bait, trying to get them on bait consistently enough that we can actually put a net over top of their head. It's a lot of effort and time put in per bird for certain. Pedro Ardapple oversees the field work for this project as part of his master's degree program at the University of Arkansas at Monticello. Go out, look for turkey sign though, put a camera, a game camera, and then put feet in front of it. Cracked corn primarily. Set up our cameras, everything, come back about every two days and check them. Rebate if we need to. And then once we get birds coming in consistently, we go set up our nets. Pretty much a heavy gauge fish net with three vented pipe bombs attached and um, we use just a rocket charge to propel it. And it carries the net right out over top of the birds and go run out and grab our birds, wrap them up, band them, put transmitters on them if we need to and release them as fast as we can. Of course, things don't always work quite that flawlessly in the field. It's hours of waiting. A lot of times we'll get up 3, 3.30, come up, set up our nets be in the blind before light and sometimes we sit till six o'clock in the evening and never catch. <laughs> the long hours of tracking, baiting, and waiting on turkeys comes down to a payoff that's over in a flash. But the information gleaned through this project will help turkeys and turkey hunters for years to come. Ultimately, the, the, you know, the real intention of this project is, a, is to provide information that's gonna allow the AGFC to better manage our resource for the public. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Arkansas's own PK Grills, maker of the new PK360, the best and last grill you'll ever buy. When you think of the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, you probably think of hunting and fishing or the enforcement of the state's fish and wildlife regulations. But behind the scenes, there's also a lot of research. Game and Fish employs a team of biologists that are essential in managing various species of fish and wildlife. This team is using a specialized electrofishing boat to capture one of the state's most interesting species, the American eel. For the American eel uh, telemetry project, what we're doing is we, we're trying to document the downstream migration patterns of adult silver eels. So we went out to the river, uh, we captured eels. Uh, on the river, we use boat electrofishing to capture eels. Uh, eels tend to like riprap habitat where there's lots of rocks. They also tend to like areas with current. And so uh, it's a really fairly simple process. It doesn't hurt the eel. Another purpose is to determine the prevalence of eels in the natural state streams. State stream biologist Jeff Quinn is spearheading the effort, focusing on the Arkansas, White, and Washita rivers, as well as their tributaries, like this spot on the Caddo River just below DeGray Lake. Our eels are doing pretty well in the Washita River drainage and the lower Arkansas River and the Washita River drainage, especially below Rimmel and, and uh, Dam from the Caddo River below Lake to Gray, we're finding quite a few numbers of small eels that are migrating up in the spring, mid, mid and late May. The eels that are found in Arkansas have survived a journey of thousands of miles, starting their lives in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean in an area called the Sargasso Sea. We believe that American eels are spawned out in the Sargasso Sea uh, of the ocean, uh, kind of near the Bermuda area of the ocean. Um, we know this based on, uh, that's where they catch the larvae of the fish. The larvae, really small planktonic larvae that drift in the ocean. After they reach Arkansas, they might stay here. We think it might take them three to four years to get here, and they might actually stay here from four to eight years, maybe even longer in some instances. Usually maybe leaving sometime around when they're about 10 to 12 years old. And when, they, when, they're, when they're mature, they'll become a silver eel. 
And it's these silver eels that we're studying with our project to kind of determine when, they, when the timing of when they're going to go downstream back to spawn out in the Gulf of Mexico. So they make an incredible journey, uh, thousands of miles, they're swimming to their spawning areas. But determining the number of eels in Arkansas rivers can be difficult. You know, eels are kind of an understudied fish that we don't really know exactly uh, what their population sizes are like. We recently did a survey in the uh, Washita White and Arkansas rivers, and I think we caught around 300 eels, most of them from the uh, Washita River and Lower Caddo rivers. So um, that doubled the number of records we had for the state. The secretive nature of these fish presents part of the problem. They're kind of hard to collect. They're, they're somewhat secretive and live in rocks and a lot of times only come at night, so it's a little uh, hard at times to really get good numbers of, understand really, get, understand really well what their population sizes are. The American eel was proposed for protection under the Endangered Species Act as recently as 2015. Even though it wasn't listed, there's still cause for concern and biologists are looking for potential threats to eel populations. But we're trying to take measures right now to restore their populations so they won't become listed in the future. Basically, we want to take a fish that's declining and reverse that trend and try to, try to make sure that their, their numbers recover. One factor that's been shown to have adverse effects on the eel population is the presence of dams. Eels are usually found in Arkansas in a variety of a diversity of water bodies, we can find them in larger rivers to smaller rivers. But the, the big thing that um, we notice is if there's a big dam in the way, you might not have eels upstream. So their distribution in the state is they're, they're generalist species. They use a variety of habitats, but they won't be found above a lot of the large dams in the state. <clears throat> dams block their migration. And making sure eels have a successful migration is one of the goals of this project. You know, I think it's just really important that we conserve eels for the future, and that's why we're doing this project and this work. They're a really important part of the history of Arkansas. Even settlers a long time ago, you know, some of them ate eels, you know, to get by. You know, they're kind of a unique fish. There's so many different things about them that uh, are unique. It'd be, It'd, it'd be really sad to lose such a fascinating, interesting creature that makes such a long, epic journey to Arkansas. After the break, we'll show you the next step in tracking eels. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Zimmerman Sports Center on South University in Little Rock. Arkansas Game and Fish Commission scientists are getting up close and personal with the American eel in hopes of increasing their presence in Arkansas rivers. So we will learn more about the natural history of the eel here in Arkansas and one thing we're really looking at is how they move and when they move up and down these rivers and head toward the ocean and also looking at the effect that some dams may have on their movement and if we need to uh, work on um, you know, improving their ability to move up and down the rivers. It all starts with catching the eels. Not always an easy task. They're kind of hard to collect. They're, they're somewhat secretive and live in rocks and a lot of times only come at night. We thought we were gonna have a hard time capturing enough eels, but uh, luckily it didn't take us but a couple hours to catch nine large eels that would be larger than about 20 inches, 21 inches. The next step, surgically implanting tracking devices into the eels. This is where Arkansas Game and Fish veterinarian Jennifer Ballard enters the picture. We looked for very large eels so they would be able to handle the transmitters uh, and would be very close to maturing and returning to the ocean. So we brought them back here to the hatchery where we have set up a clean surgical space where we can work on them. And one at a time, we uh, put them into an anesthetic chemical. It sort of sedates them, knocks them out. We take measurements and look at their coloration and then we place them on the surgery table to perform the procedure, which is just a, a small incision. We put the transmitter in their abdomen or their, their body cavity and we sew it up and we put them in fresh water to recover. And then we'll keep them here at the hatchery for 48 hours to watch for them, make sure there aren't any complications to surgery and return them to the river where we found them. 
While the transmitter helps researchers monitor eel movements, biologists also hope to gather information that will help them understand the timing of the eel migration. The measurements we're taking, we want to try and see if we can predict based on the physical features of the eel if it's going to migrate downstream. And, and so the physical feature of the eel will include their size, just their length and their weight, also their girth, how th you know, thick or round they are in diameter, uh, their pectoral fin lengths, silver eels, generally their fins become elongated before they, they migrate downstream, and often their eye diameters change as their eyes get much larger. Once the surgery is finished, the eels are monitored for at least 48 hours before they're put back in the river. We try to uh, put all the eels back in the really close to where they were captured. Uh, that way we weren't having any effect on just by putting them in a new environment on their migration pattern. So we tried to release them in the same stretch. We had a, about a, a one mile long, we called it a focal reach, where we're trying to capture all the fish and then release all the fish in that area really close to where we thought they were captured. For this project, Game and Fish is also using tracking resources from both the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So there are stationary uh, receivers that are put along the rivers in different locations and these trackers uh, put out a signal and every, when they swim by those receivers it picks up that information and we can tell where they were at certain times and we, we can use that to, over time to create a picture of their movements. So the battery life of these transmitters is approximately a year, so we should be able to track where they move over the next year or so. The receivers are already providing valuable information. There was large rains right before Christmas, and, but that, those large rains stimulated the fish to migrate downstream, and the receivers we had by Felsenthal Lock and Dam started picking them up around Christmas, and over a four-day period, we documented three of our nine fish going downriver. So what should you know about these creatures if you encounter one in the wild? Well, first of all, they're not electric eels. They're nothing to be scared of. Uh, they're not snakes. And they're mostly nocturnal. You're not real likely to catch one on your fishing pole. You might catch one if you're um, you know, running a trot line, but you can just put them back in the water. They're not hurt, hurting anything. They just you know, live in rocks and, and eat crayfish, and they're really a pretty cool species. So nothing to be scared of. Ballard, who has been with the agency a little more than a year, says projects such as this are very rewarding. Um, our biologists, our, our wildlife and fisheries managers, we're scientists and we do a lot of management and you know we like to facilitate these opportunities but we also try to add to the science and learn more about these species and it improves our ability to manage them and manage the ecosystem. So, this is part of you know, a bigger picture. There's a lot of research that already happens and we've just started our new research evaluation and compliance division. So hopefully we can just do more and more of this in the future to improve how we manage all of our resources. Arkansas Wildlife presents the Watch and Win Giveaway. During each episode of Arkansas Wildlife, we'll give away an Arkansas resident hunting and fishing license. At the end of this season, we'll be giving away $500 worth of fishing gear with everything you need for outdoor adventures on Arkansas lakes and streams. It's all provided by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Visit the Arkansas Wildlife webpage at arkansaswildlife.com and click on the Watch and Win icon to enter. This week's winner is Dwayne Griffith from Ward. Congratulations and thanks for watching.